I'm at the uh, 20th uh, anniversary birthday party of the Management Development uh, Network with Shirley Otto, one of the five founders. One of the five founders, that's right. Right. And how did it all start in 1991, Shirley? Uh, a group of us were at a seminar to do with using consultants and became aware that people were just beginning to take on the using individual consultants. But there was a feeling that we were in some ways perhaps a maverick group that weren't perhaps need to be organized or policed just to ensure that we did best practice and realizing the time had come perhaps for us who did as, who worked as management consultants independently, perhaps we should start thinking about how we showed that we kept up to standards, that we met, talked, learnt, grew, changed, challenged and did all those things. And we thought, let's set up a network and get on and make those events, arrange on events, and we have. And all of that is um, now totally accepted. Um, what have you seen change over the last 20 years? Well, I think one... One of the big changes is that as people got used to the notion that it was okay to use outsiders to strengthen organizations, it was okay to use outsiders to review your governance, it was okay to use outsiders for internal training. It could be done by people who knew their stuff, knew the sector, and could tailor make the training consultancy, the whatever specialist coaching or mentoring could make that work and understood how to be thoughtful, how to be confidential, uh, and how to get the best for the client or the cause of that organization. If I can borrow the microphone back, because it's quite noisy in here. Um, who's um, been members and are members over the, the years? It's quite a diverse bunch of people from those that are dealing with really tough financial, legal governance issues through to others who are facilitators and uh, help with mediation and so on. Is there a shared culture emerging from that? There, there is a core uh, requirement, which is you need to be working as an independent. That means freelance. You need to have worked uh, in the voluntary sector as an independent for at least two years, as, uh, concurrent years. Uh, and you need to do the bulk of your work with voluntary or community organisations. And we must have started, I can't remember, well, we might have started with 30 or 40 but we're now about 106 people who share a commitment to the sector. Whether we share total detail about the values, about the ways of working, we probably vary and debate and challenge each other about it. But as you said, we do range from people who are generalists in helping organizations through to people who specialize more in strategic planning, finance, or fundraising. But the core has to be that our job is to influence and help organisations manage or govern, them, govern themselves better. If I could just turn to what we've been doing over the uh, last hour or so, um, people have been giving their personal reflections on um, what happened in 1991 for them and since. Can you pick out a few? It's very interesting to know how many people, it's been quite a journey coming to be a consultant or trainer. There is no one pathway, but how much we've been influenced, but also needed to adjust to and see how we can make work for organizations, the huge changes that have happened over the last 20 years. Uh, and the, the key one as reflected in our thinking has been attitudes about management, managerialism, managers, the birth of governance, uh, the birth of what we call what boards do, uh, and much more importance put on, on things like good leadership, professionalization, but nowadays within this bigger picture that we're in, the importance of evaluation, impact, uh, measurement, and, uh, and all things associated with that. But a strong theme throughout the, our thinking is clearly keep keep true to values as a trainer, consultant, but to help organizations take true to value, take straight, true to the values that are true to their organization, their cause. Uh, and we need the confidence to keep doing that in whatever uncertainties are ahead. And I mentioned that I'm doing some work with others with uh, big lottery um, funds who are thinking about um, their funding programs and how to use their programs to help people learn from each other. Uh, do you have any thoughts about how funders can be 
most helpful beyond funding? Beyond funding. Well, you, you yourself reflect a very important theme for us, which is the way we use changing technologies, whether the technologies are toolkits for bringing groups together or actually technology itself to get over the barriers of distance and space and bring us together. If funders would at times realise it's important to continue to fund specific projects, but sometimes they need to fund process, they need to fund how we communicate, they need to fund how we come together and how we can make change out with whatever impact measures may be appropriate to help people just to get a sense of community and communi communing with each other, exploiting every opportunity we have for supporting often the small, lonely, hardworking, always been there kind of small organisation that is the heart of our sector.